this government that encourages innovation and technological advancement, as well as helping businesses to protect um, their intellectual assets. And she has uh, had a long career in this field. She's a, a leading expert and attorney and a former head of the American, American Intellectual Property Law Association. I said it correctly. I also want to personally and on behalf of the Amcham thank the Deputy uh, Director for having juggled incredibly her schedule to be with us today. We're extremely uh, grateful that you have made time to share with us your ideas. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Sorry. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. I feel like I am back with friends right now because I had an opportunity to meet many of you at a, uh, a board luncheon meeting. I guess probably a year ago was it? I don't recall how long ago. But at any rate, you were a very eager, very knowledgeable audience and eager to find out what we were doing in the United States. And I have to tell you that with a lot of audiences, they think what we do is mundane. But I think you appreciate how important intellectual property is to your business and to your everyday existence. Um, intellectual property drives what all of us do. Now today, a lot of my discussion is going to be focused on patents just because we're undergoing a sea change in terms of how we're handling patents and what we're doing, not just in the level in the, in the United States, but internationally. But there's a lot of forms of intellectual property that each one of you think is valuable and essential to your company. Copyrights and trademarks always come to mind, but also, of course, trade secret law is also extremely important. And to those of you here in that room, that is a form of intellectual property that's very valuable and vibrant and necessary to your businesses. Now, the reason that I almost, almost wasn't here today is I was actually at a uh, UN General Assembly's meeting at WIPO in Geneva, the World Intellectual Property Office where 147 member countries convene, and I actually didn't make it this year to any of the General Assembly meeting. I didn't sit in that nice huge hall with, you know, behind Lizzie Tazuni, and I didn't actually make it in there because I had meeting after meeting after meeting, and it went breakfast, lunch, and dinners the entire time. I had a lot of bilateral meetings, talking with heads of patent offices, with other countries, trying to improve our relationships and to work with them. Now, last night in particular, we had a meeting that the United States hosted at the UN mission, and it was followed by a rather late dinner, which is why I got the excitement of showing up today in the morning, last minute, and not arriving yesterday. But that actually was a very, very important meeting. It's something that we are working on, and I'll get into in a little while, called Tegernsee. It's named after a city in Germany where we're starting to try and get all patent offices throughout the world thinking about potentially doing substantive harmonization of patent law. Now, culturally, we're all different. Legally, we are all different. But any similarities that we can take advantage of between our offices will save business money, it will give business certainty, it will provide clarity, it will give you more transparency, and it is a win for business. Now, I am not naive enough to think that convergence or harmonization is going to happen in the intellectual property field just because we have different legal systems and different ways of looking at things. But any similarities that we can take advantage of work to each one of your best interests. So at any rate, we all know we have to do more for less. I have to do it in the government, our governments all have to do it, and you all have to do it in your organizations. Um, the Europe, the Europe and the United States have been very successful with innovation and being creative and um, supporting our business units and knowing that all forms of intellectual property are essential to give business that confidence to invest, to create jobs, and to improve our economy. So EPO, you know, European Patent Office and US Patent Office, we are fairly aligned on many topics. And we're actually working with them in a lot of areas. Um, in particular, we have something called trilateral discussions, 
where the European Patent Office, the U.S. Patent Office, and the Japanese Patent Office, those three offices have gotten together um, and discussed common problems, common issues, and tried to develop convergence even on procedural type aspects. And then, not surprising, Korea and South Korea and China wanted to join, and we created the IP5, the top five patent offices in the world, where, depending on statistics, I don't want anyone to misquote me, 76 to 80 percent of all patent applications in the world are filed in those five offices. Now, there's a variety of languages and cultures in those five patent offices, but technology and science is the same in any language. So we have problems in the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office that we're working through in terms of um, our IT systems, for instance. We're looking at best ways to do things. We realize that business is global. They don't care just about the United States. Business wants to be everywhere. So we want to make sure that any procedures or policies that we put into place allow this flexibility to be global. Um, so the IP5 get, got together. And you can just imagine, so we're going to have, there's always a Chinese translator, a Korean translator, a Japanese translator, and the Europeans, fortunately, have agreed to speak in English, which makes me really happy. Um, I know a little bit of French, so I do pick up a little bit of it. I have, I'm survival French is the way I look at it right now. Um, but, but at any rate, even though these are very different countries, very different cultures, and our different countries have issues with each other in a variety of areas, Technology, how we protect technology, how we look at it, and, and how it just makes sense for us to work together. So IT systems are a big thing that we're working together with. Even how you file applications, um, the information that you request, the way that you look at prior art, we have discussions. How are examiners, for instance, um, classify patents? We have a new program with the European Patent Office where we're actually using a substantial amount of the ECLA system in our new patent classification system. We talk with the Chinese and say, well, how do you search? What databases do you use? We talk with uh, the JPO, Japanese Patent Office, and we say, how do you examine? How do you look at that prior art? Now, fortunately, we have the America Invents Act, where March 16, 2013, the United States becomes what you know of as a first-to-file country. So we are finally on the regular international level, and which um, hopefully is going to facilitate things for businesses. In the short term, it is creating havoc in my world in the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office because I'm going to be living in two worlds, what I call my pre-America Invents Act world, which is where I am right now, and after March 16, 2013, that's going to be in the first to file world, where how we look at prior art and how we apply prior art are two different ways. So I don't think from the business perspective that's going to have a substantial change for you. I think that for business it's just going to be a win-win. For me it's just I get to train 9,000 patent examiners on two systems. And so it, it really is creating a lot of work at the USPTO. And this is only the tip of the iceberg also with what we're doing inside our agency at this time. Um, there's always something going on. But the IP5 is especially good too procedurally. And we're talking about things in IP5. For instance, um, there was talk of something called a one portal dossier. And now we're talking a global dossier. So we're talking about instead of each of the five patent offices right now, and I'm just talking five, because we can't have a 147 member WIPO organization discuss these issues. It would be chaos. Um, and and these, this covers 76 to 80 percent of the patent applications, just these five countries. We're coming up with something, we're thinking, and we're, I think they'll still call it the global dossier, where patent examiners in Europe, Japan, US, <laughs> China, and Korea can access the work of other examiners using web-based technology. I always think of it as cloud technology, so think of a cloud. Um, and so it, they actually have, so our examiners in the US can see how prosecution is going in, in Europe, how prosecution is going in China, where they're familiar with other databases than what we have. Did they find a better piece of prior art? 
our examiners can access it through that portal, see what there is. We, we're getting pretty good, but we're not totally...